featuring our resident discussions um, will not be posted online. And with that, I'd like to take off um, by introducing Dr. Sarah uh, Alban Nguyen, uh, who will lead off the faculty introductions. Yeah, hey, good evening to everybody, um, or late evening to folks who are joining us from the East Coast. Um, my name is Sarah Albanduin. I'm one of the Associate Residency Program Directors, um, and I'm the Residency APD who's in charge of recru uh, recruitment and coordinating recruitment, um, so that's why I get to be the first person to speak. Uh, I'm excited to be able to talk with you all a little bit about our program, um, and I would like to start it off by introducing the doctor who leads our program, who is Dr. Rebecca Berman. Um, she's joining us here from just down the hall from me uh, at our Parnassus Hospital, and I'll uh, let Dr. Berman introduce herself. Welcome, everyone. It is so awesome to see you here online with us. Um, UCSF is a phenomenal place to train, so I'm so delighted that you're checking us out today. I think what sets UCSF apart is that we are a science university. And we offer top-notch research, and we have three different hospital sites, which means we offer amazing breadth and depth of clinical care. And we're a public university, which means that at our core, whether we're at the bench or at the bedside, we are all dedicated to reducing health inequities. So if what you're looking for is a top-notch research institution with amazing clinical training and a strong social justice mission, you're actually done. Welcome home. UCSF is your place, and we look forward to seeing you in June. Um, another thing that I think is really special about UCSF is the incredible people that we have. We have amazingly diverse uh, residents in all ways, what they bring to our program from both their backgrounds and also their interests. And this is a place where you will be able to find um, the next steps forward to launch your career. Um, we know you all have phenomenal choices, and we hope that uh, you make UCSF part of your future. Welcome, welcome. Sarah, you're muted. You're on mute. No webinar is complete without muting. We're not. I know. Two years into using Zoom. Um, I would like to introduce the rest of our program leadership, um, the leaders of our two primary care tracks. And so I'll start with Dr. Addington White. And I forgot to remind you that the prompt is uh, who you are, your pronouns, they're listed in our names, but also to say out loud where you call home. And then as Dr. Berman had done, something that you love about being at UCSF. So Joni, I will kick it over to you. Okay, I luckily unmuted. It's more like that I would not forget to unmute, just so you all know. Um, I'm Joni Adding to Might. I'm the program director for the um, SFPC primary care track, which is based at San Francisco General. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, my home, I feel like, is San Francisco now. Um, I'm a Midwesterner, but I'm settling in here and loving San Francisco. Um, so um, other things that I really value here are all the residents and the patient care. My program really focuses on general medical care, inpatient and outpatient at San Francisco General Hospital. So that's my, uh, I would say, professional home. What was I, I'm sorry, was I supposed to ask something else? <laughs> no, I think just the thing, the thing that you love about UCSF, and maybe you can tell us, because this will be a question I'm sure that comes up, um, you know, what is something in particular that you love about the SFPC program that's unique to that track of our program? Okay, um, sorry, I lost track of what I was doing. Um, you know, I love the residents in my program, and I love being kind of in the trenches with residents in clinic, in the hospital. Um, we have a wonderful curriculum at, on um, both clinical medicine and uh, all forms of uh, health justice. We're very focused on providing care for all patients, and we're compassionate about that and dedicated to it. Um, and yeah, my favorite thing is have a great patient with a resident in the clinic or in the hospital and work with them and learn together. Yeah. Thank you, Joni. Um, and I'll introduce Dr. Ryan Laponis, who is the program director for our UC primary care track within our program. Uh, and Ryan, I'll ask you the same thing. So to introduce yourself, your pronouns, where you call home, um, and then maybe one thing that you really love about UC PC in particular. Absolutely. Uh, and thank you, Sarah, for organizing this event. Um, thrilled to meet all of you virtually and hopefully meet many of you uh, 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 more intimately soon. My name is Ryan Laponis. I use he, his, um, and I'm program director for the UC primary care track uh, based at UCSF. 
Um, uh, I um, grew up in Santa Barbara, which is in Southern California, but now call San it's called the Bay Area in San Francisco home. I've been here now for 24 years. I uh, can't imagine leaving. Um, uh, as was mentioned, you know, the residents are really the centerpiece and star of this program, um, uh, uh, maybe, maybe only uh, uh, surmounted by the patients. Um, we take care of just an incredibly diverse uh, patient population here at UCSF. And I'll say um, in the UCPC track, it's, it's incredibly diverse um, uh, across all socioeconomic statuses within uh, San Francisco and beyond, as well as all the complex medical conditions you can imagine that come to a partnering medical center. But I will say that um, something I'm particularly proud of with the um, UCPC uh, uh, curriculum and program is we are very deeply committed to cultivating leaders. Um, we, we feel that uh, primary care is really in the heart and soul of the healthcare system, and we want to change it to be better. Um, and I'm very proud to, to, to help build the, the skills or begin to build the skills necessary um, to make that change, uh, to build equity into, the, into a healthcare system that, that, that is not uh, presently. Thank you so much, Ryan. Um, and then I'll just to round out the introductions, uh, Sarah Albanwin. I'm originally from El Paso, Texas, uh, although I call the Bay Area home now. My, my wife and I have been out here for 11 years. Um, just had a kiddo who we're raising out here, so the Bay Area is probably home. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and hers. And then something I love about UCSF, I came here as a resident and I've stayed on for faculty. You will hear multiple times that UCSF stands for You Can Stay Forever, and many of us have. Um, I think the thing I love about the training program, and it continues on into faculty, is that there's not one way to define how you can have a successful academic career, um, and that the program really embraces what are your interests as an individual. It has pathways to learning, which you all can find on our website, which are ways to sort of prep you and try out academic careers. Um, and I thought when I joined that academic medicine was really research-based, clinical research or translational research, um, and then learning that you can build careers in health equity and justice, that you can build careers in medical education, that you can build careers in quality improvement and systems leadership, um, that you can build careers in policy and advocacy, and that each of those is equally valued and supported both mentorship-wise and funding-wise as a faculty member. Um, I think it's something that's really truly unique about this type of academic institution. Um, so being able to grow yourself as an individual, show up with who you are and your passions, and know that those will be supported and cultivated, I think is a huge thing. Uh, so to get on to the questions that folks had answered, um, I'll start off by asking Dr. Berman, one of the questions that we get a lot is about um, the program accepting international medical graduates for interview. And I think this is a super important question, so I'll kick it over to Dr. Berman to answer the question about somebody applying as an international medical graduate, and then also any cutoffs for step scores for international med medical graduates or any medical graduates, um, you know, and knowing now that step one is pass fail, but thinking about before it was or step two and things like that. So maybe I'll take the second of those questions first, because it applies to all of our applicants, which is we just need you to pass your steps. Um, we really believe in holistic review, which means really thinking about where you started and where you are and what you've done with the opportunities available to you. Tests are just tests. They just measure whether you're good at taking tests. We do need you to be able to pass your tests so that you can pass your boards, um, but we don't care about scores. And that's true for um, IMGs or, or US grads alike. In terms of um, international medical graduates um, or um, US graduates requiring visas, we do offer H-1B visas. Um, and we do interview a few IMGs every year. It is very competitive to get IMG um, interviews here, but we do, and we have had a few um, international medical graduates in recent years. Um, and then to the question of step three, I think, the same thing. If you if you have taken it, um, there's a question in the chat about if you're applying as an IMG for step three. I think if you otherwise would have taken it, obviously the score is going to be reported. If you haven't, there's no need to take it ahead of time. Um, our residents now actually take it towards the end of their intern year, beginning to mid of their R2 year. So that'll be there'll be time built into your schedule for that. Um, the next question was around step scores and a little bit around how we celebrate diversity in our program. And I'll actually take that one and build off of what Dr. Berman had said around holistic review. Um, so as the, I'm one of the APDs who leads our residency diversity committee. It was something that I was a part of when I was a resident, actually even as a fourth year medical student rotating out here, um, continued on as a chief resident and now have the privilege of being able to lead as a faculty member. Um, and I also work in our recruitment sphere. Uh, and with those two hats over the last six years, we've really redesigned the way that we screen applicants, invite applicants to interview, conduct our interview process and conduct our 
our rank process. And we've uh, changed that to align with the double AMC's holistic review policy, where instead of being focused on academic metrics, step scores, honors, you know, letters of recommendation, having things like top 1% ever, where you went to school, um, we're really looking at applicants holistically and saying, what are the qualities of physicians that we want to graduate at the end of residency? And how do we search for those qualities, which are oftentimes in the narrative of the clinical comments, letters of recommendation, personal statements? How do we identify those folks who have the qualities we're looking for and are at a place where they will succeed with the mentorship we have once they arrive in our training program? Um, and I think because of that, as uh, Dr. Berman had said, we don't really have a cutoff for step scores. So if you had a low step one score, I think the thing we are looking is to say, was that because it's a test and some people are just really terrible at translating their practical knowledge into tests? Um, or is there actually somebody who needs more support in their clinical knowledge in patient care, that knowing that we're a very rigorous and fast paced training program, would we be able to offer that degree of support that somebody might need? Um, and so I think the rest of the narrative tells that how you've done from the beginning of, you know, clerkships, which really is a training experience until the end of fourth year. So looking at the growth that you've had over third and fourth year, um, and then looking at the narrative from your different letters, your MSPE, your personal statements um, about your clinical skills, your, you know, presentation, organization, your passions, where you imagine yourself being in medicine and taking the sum of all of that um, to recommend an interview or not. So just to say again that the step scores don't really matter. It's more about the trajectory of what you've been given, what you've been able to make with it and where, where you imagine yourself going in your career. Uh, and then in terms of um, celebrating diversity, I think it's something that I've been very pleased to find that in the last several years, academic medicine has been much more outspoken about um, celebrating and promoting and really doing active work against, you know, in anti-oppression and anti-racism. Um, it's something that I think our program and our school has been doing for a long time. Um, and we are by no means perfect. There is so much more to do, but it's something that I think everybody, not just myself as the RDC faculty chair, but all of our faculty leaders and residents really embrace as core to how we function as clinicians, as educators, as mentors. Um, our residency diversity committee, uh, shout out to the RDC, will be holding another session on 9-1, um, specifically for folks who are applying as underrepresented in medicine, first gen, um, and other folks who have been marginalized by medicine historically. Uh, so I encourage you to come and meet that great community of people. It serves as a family within a family, um, and I think helps to advise on everything from mentorship to the curriculum we have here to advising, feedback, um, uh, and evaluation. So really a core part of, of what we do within UCSF. Uh, I'll move on to the next question. Anna, is anything coming up in the chat that we should add to something that Rebecca and I have said? There's some kind of focused questions, but I think big picture, we can keep moving along and I'm, uh, okay. I'm catching up with some stuff in the chat. Thanks for asking. Of course. Um, so I'll go back to Joni uh, and to answer the question is, what is your perceived view of the resident and faculty relationship at UCSF? So um, I think that's a very important question and, and probably a really important question for all of you thinking about different programs, um, because you really want uh, teachers who are dedicated to your learning. You want teachers who are going to mentor you in every aspect of that learning and really get behind you and um, make sure that you are successful in the best way you can be. And I would say that's a really strong point here. I think all of us on this call, all of us in clinic and in the three hospitals are devoted to residents. And there are many levels of how we support you um, from clinic support to hospital support to having a, a regular advisor to having a program director. Um, and um, it just really adds up to a place where you're going to be supported by many people who know you and are dedicated to your education. Yeah, I agree. I think it's it's such an important thing to find a place where the folks who are going to be your closest um, teachers and career advisors are really there for you. Um, and I, I think this is a place with a, a much more flattened hierarchy than any other place I train. Uh, and one in which I feel like all the educators are really in this for the residents. Uh, I'll move on to the next question that I would love all three PDs to be able to answer. Uh, this is a great one. If you had all the time and resources, what's one thing you would do to improve the program? And then alongside, are there any big changes in the works that folks should know about? Uh, 
well, if money wasn't an object, I would pay the residents a lot more money. That would probably be the first thing that would happen because um, uh, th that would be very important. Um, and then maybe, uh, you know, equally seriously, I think, you know, if, if we could do even more um, uh, 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 individuation for each of our residents, I think one of the one of the thrills of being in the residency leadership here is we recruit people who have very varied interests. I mean, it's remarkable um, what people go on to do. I was looking at our alumni list just for our track the other day, and it was incredible the, the diversity of the of the of the careers that they've had and so i think it would be great for us to even further be able to create you know even more specific opportunities for individuals to do work that they want to do um uh, uh, because you all are amazing people that come to this program and we want to you know have, have the first step out of residency be a big step um uh, into a place where you you feel like you're you're starting your career up as strong as possible and maybe I'll piggyback on that on one exciting change we have made recently that I am really proud of, which is our firm lead system. So we um, now pay each of our APDs protected time to mentor a small group of residents. So they each have about 15 residents. And because our program's big, we have 180 plus residents. But each APD has 15 residents they know super well. Um, with the idea that they can provide um, long-term mentorship to them and help guide them through the program um, to help make sure that each resident is getting the mentorship that they need to get where they need to go. Um, behind me, by the way, you will see, it's like a plug. These are our strategic goals for the year. This is our year of community. We are really focusing on mentorship, on rebuilding our educational culture like every residency in the country, COVID, uh, increased isolation. It was so fun today being at Morning Report where it was like standing room only and the hum in the room as everyone was talking. And um, that is really exciting. We're focusing on community and well-being. Um, and we also are continuing our work in, in DEIA that Sarah Alvin has been leading. So those are some exciting things that I'm looking forward to continuing to work on this year. And I'll just add, I completely agree with both Ryan and Rebecca. I think um, if I had endless um, amounts of money, the other thing I would put money into is our anti-racism efforts. I think we are all dedicated to that, looking at our institution, ourselves, how we teach, how we practice medicine. But I think, you know, we can do more. Every place can do more. And I think... Um, resources to improve our training, improve our sensitivity um, are, are something that we could use even more of. And that's what I do with Mike. Thank you, three. Um, I'm gonna answer one question that I had reserved for the end, but is coming up a lot in the chat. It's just around the um, signaling and supplementary application. So we did not participate last year in the signaling and supplemental application. We don't intend to participate this year in it. Um, to, to us, it's a little bit confusing for, for folks and we didn't want to feel, to, it felt more exclusionary than inclusionary. Um, and then along with that, there was a question of if somebody is coming from the other coast or from, you know, honestly anywhere but the West Coast and really wants to signal that they would like to train at our program or train in California, I'll answer that not as a UCSF representative, but just as a faculty mentor, what I would tell anyone is that if, if you're specifically interested in a program for whatever reason, geographic location, the kind of mentorship, the fellowships they have, your partner has already accepted a job there. And so you really wanna live there. Um, say that, I think at the end of your personal statement, there's a box where, and, and be specific about what it is. You know, it's like, I, if you find something that you really love from talking to a faculty member, a resident, or the website, um, and that's what you're excited about. I think every program loves to hear genuine interest in the program. If there's something that you feel like you can get out of it that you wouldn't get anywhere else. Um, there's no need to say like, I would love to be in California or I would love to be in Iowa. I would love to be in Florida. You're like wherever it is that you're applying in, if it's just saying it for the sake of saying it. So I think we, we don't consider, you know, we'll sort of glance over that. Um, but if there is a specific thing that you're excited about and you would like to let the program know, I would absolutely put that maybe in just like the end of your paragraph of your personal statement as a way of communicating that interest specifically to the program. Um, and along those lines of things that make the program awesome, uh, Ryan, I will ask you for the last sort of question that we have here, um, which is what in your mind distinguishes UCSF from other internal medicine programs in the country? I think there's something really remarkable about the humility of the residents that come here. 
um, you know, as I was sharing before, like I was looking at the alumni list the other week and it's like people are off doing amazing things. And at the same time, like the people that, you know, you train with are, you know, people that like you want to have a beer with or like, you know, you would never know that they like published in JAMA like the other week or something. They're just, they're, they, they want to learn more. They want to understand what, what's going on, what makes you tick, what makes other people tick. Um, uh, sort of that, that lack of, of ego um, is quite remarkable. Um, and so, I, and I feel like that's pretty pervasive within the program. Um, so it's a place where, where, where learning is normal. We don't expect people to know everything up front. Um, we kind of are, are humble about what we, what we, what we, what we, you know, recognize that we don't know. And so it's, it's a place where, where, where learning is, is sort of just in the water. And it's, and it's remarkable because the people that are coming here are already so brilliant. Um, so I, I, that, that delightful dichotomy um, is ever present, I feel like, um, when I come to a conference or I've seen patients in clinic or on the wards, it's just, it's just everywhere. And I love that about UCSF. Thank you, Ryan. Um, and then I think we have maybe just three more minutes for a couple of questions uh, to our awesome chief residents. Are there any themes that are coming up in the chat that you wanted to pose to any of us? Um, one question that we just received was how COVID has changed the program um, and sort of how um, we are moving forward after the pandemic. Well, that is a big question. Um, first, I would say one question you should ask every program is how did you protect your residents during COVID? And I would say I am really proud of how UCSF stepped up to make sure that at the beginning, during those months of uncertainty, we made sure that our uh, faculty did the bulk of the COVID work. Our residents did see COVID patients in the ICU where they were sort of uniquely trained, but um, on the wards, we had our faculty taking care of our COVID patients to help reduce exposure for our residents and making sure that they had proper PPE and really trying to keep them safe. We um, had many changes in our program due to sort of required, you know, going all to Zoom. I would say now that we're getting to come back in person, we're realizing there's certain things that are kind of better by Zoom, right? Town halls across three sites work better by Zoom. Morning report in person is pretty awesome. But when people are on clinic, it's nice to have virtual morning reporting. So we do still keep some elements of the virtual when it's when it works and really thinking through how do we make sure that we rebuild community um, throughout. But this is a great question to continue to ask our residents as well. Rebecca, did you want to answer about fellowship preparation as well? Oh yeah, we actually have like a nationally acclaimed fellowship um, support program. So uh, Dr. Laura Huppert and Dr. Jen Babic have presented nationally about our program. Um, we have a fellowship brochure that's like 50 pages long that helps guide people through every step of the way. We also provide um, uh, coaches to help people like through the application process with their personal statement, with their CVs. We do um, uh, virtual interview training and train people on how to interview well virtually and do mock interviews. Um, I personally individually meet with everyone who's um, applying to fellowship and um, our resident, the fellowship directors tell me that they love seeing UCSF residents on their list because they know that our residents are gonna be phenomenal clinicians and have all these amazing extras. So they always go sort of to the top of people's fellowship match lists. Um, and then Rebecca, maybe one more thing just to speak about uh, is just sort of wellness and mental health and how we support that in our residents. Oh, that is a super question. So again, we are really national leaders in thinking through well-being. Dr. Larissa Thomas is our GME head of well-being and was until recently an, an APD in the program. Um, she helped us think through not only how do we support people by making sure they have the time and space to get mental health services? We have a Ginger app for people who prefer app-based um, uh, mental health. We have our faculty, our FSAP, it's like our uh, mental health services here on campus. But in addition, really thinking through structural ways that we can support well-being. We have five days off every 28 days, uh, which is actually kind of radical in medical education, but sort so of recognizing that people need more time out of the hospital to rebuild. And then really thinking about how do we pour joy into the workday? How do we build community um, within the hospital through our phenomenal educational conferences that our chief residents lead? We have a well-being committee 
They do all sorts of community events. We do ticket drops. You can talk to the residents about some of the fun things that they've gotten to do together, like go to the Giants game or go make pottery together um, and help learn together. So lots of lots more to say on that, but that's a great and important question that you should be asking everywhere. Awesome. Um, all right. Well, on behalf of the UCSF leadership, everyone you see here and all the rest of the very large team, um, thank you all again for taking time out of your evening to get to know us. And we hope to see many of your applications coming through soon. Um, have a great time with our chief residents and residents. Wonderful. Thank you so much um, for joining us. And now we'd like to show a short video 